Hi guys, it's your boy JD, back again with bullshit. As we can all tell, no one understood what the fuck I just said, but that's okay. So, yeah, I'm gonna explain what's going on. Obviously, I'm reading a John Locke fanfiction, but understand I had a good omen fanfiction lined up for today instead. You know what happened? Um, since, as you probably saw in the update video, if you didn't, let me just explain, I got a new computer, and this computer wants to be an asshole. So my settings for, my settings for OBS or being a dickhead, so in our words, kind of, sort of, can't, um, I forgot to set them back to what they usually were, which is mp4, so I can just upload my audio, because you know damn why I never show my screen, because it's a lot of work, and I don't like doing that, and also, be right back, I gotta take a piss, joys of this is, I actually learned how to edit, so it doesn't even matter if I'm gone for like a half an hour or not, because I can just edit it out, <laughs> I'm back, and I am with painkillers. The base kind of killers. Because we don't sexualize serial killers in this house. In the home away from Jade house. One, two, three, four. Four, three. So we can overdose some painkillers. Plus, I've taken five, so I'll be fine. Let me take these the drier ones. No, I can take them dry. I'm fine. Eh, whatever, I'll take it with a cola just in case. Oh. Don't be like me, kids. Don't have horrible genetics that leave you with boils in your thighs. So you must have to take painkillers on a daily. Because these motherfuckers open like I don't even know what I, I don't know what I want to say. Honestly, okay. So future me editing this you know what to do no we can't have our fans knowing fans people that get bored at three o'clock in the morning and decide you know what some fanfic would be good for me those people don't let them don't let them don't let them see this please don't i'll cry i'll cry cry i'll cry 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 anyway future jade you know where to edit stop so yeah okay let's give me a minute because i never am actually prepared for these so, damn. No, I realize I always make future me do all this work when I can just look for the fanfic before I get here. So I don't have to do this whole bullshit thing where I'm like looking for the fanfic as I'm talking to you. Reality is, it's not gonna be taking very long because I have a perfect fanfic ready on the mark, and you're gonna love it. I promise. And it's not even gonna be a kinky one this time. This time. Mm. I know, I'm saucy. <sighs> Literally just got done watching the name name Fran, and honestly, I'm living my best life. Bro, like, does anyone else remember her? Like, she was a queen. Like, that was my first crush. Surprisingly enough, I like the loud ones. I like the ones with a big-ass mouth because they're just like me. <laughs> Obviously, we're doing only complete works because, let's be real, um, if I do an incomplete work and I get obsessed with this fucking story, I'm gonna shoot myself. Obviously, we're not doing... <laughs> oh god damn let me see mm -mm. Ooh, but there's body worshipping but that's 10,000 words and I don't have that money not money time Ooh! let me see nope <laughs> That one was about to get fun, but I was like, nah, chief. Let me see. No. Damn. I can't find any fanfiction, can I? Let me actually get in these tags, because you know how, like, sometimes you look for fanfic and the tags just be all low. <laughs> it can't be sexual. I'm sorry, guys. There's no no smut in this one. I'm not doing smut, no. Ain't no, no oral. But we can do humor. Humor's a big go. So, it went from 300 to 95. Thanks a lot, Jade. Ooh, Kit Gnome. Still has sex and strippers in it. And we're not t trying to get YouTube to be like, will we ever monetize her in the future? Probably not. Well, makes sense. We're going to go for a fun one, guys. Yes. Hercules. I'm oh, sorry. I'm gonna shoot myself. I'm gonna shoot myself. Hold on. Give me a minute. 
<sighs> Mm-mm. I love you guys are just gonna have to hear me saying this because I'm most likely gonna be like, I'm probably gonna tell myself, Journey, this is a great, let's just leave it in. Like, obviously, it's not good, and I'm gonna leave it in regardless. Mmm. This is a thousand words and shouldn't take more than 30 minutes. <laughs> guys, see, I can, like, usually I can read these in, like, five, I can read a thousand word fanfiction in, like, about five, seven minutes at most. It doesn't even take me ten minutes. Ten minutes is, like, a two thousand word fanfiction. Because usually if. <clears throat> okay. Usually if it's good, I'll be here for it and quit for it. Bro, what? <laughs> it's a crack fit, guys. It's better get lit. Okay. Him, 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 Enjoy that disgustingness you just heard. Um, this fanfic is called The One Time John Wore Woman's Underwear for Signs or The Time That Charlotte's... No, this is not it. Because all my fucking cross-dressing fanfictions, John never cross-dresses. I'm sorry, it's just, I, ne I can't imagine Martin Freeman doing it. I can imagine Benedict Cumberbatch, aka Lizard Man, doing it, but not... Not John. Oh, that's why. John's not bottom. Well, I mean, he is, but that's a besides point, darling. Um. Wait, why don't I just check my history? No. Where is it? No. I think I should just take humor off the tags and see what I can find, because honestly, it is getting hard for me. Was there someone that fit? I don't even think there was. Uh-uh. Also, let me just, the top, okay, just, no, no slavery, because my black ass, no thank you, oh god, um, let me see, oh god, you guys are gonna love this one, I found it, I found the queen of hearts, and which, I hope in this fan fiction. Oh my god. <laughs> let, me, let me just read the summary so I can tell you guys. Okay. This fanfic is called John Watson's Ab Ab Abom Ab Ab Abominable Bride by Luna Raindrop. Summary. What if Sherlock did not come back during TA TH? Not gonna even try that. What if he came back later? What if he crashed John's wedding? Watson's wedding day. What if the wedding was part of the plot all along? What if what is our favorite drama queen, queen to do? Will will John be happy to see him? Okay. What I'm hoping is gonna happen is Sherlock comes in a corset, a wedding dress, and these. Oh my God! Y'all ever play The Sims Three and you saw those like boots? Hold up, let me look up a picture of them. Cause y'all are really about to like look at me like I'm stupid, and you're not gonna know what the fuck I'm talking about because some of y'all aren't simmers. Here they are. Future me better put a damn picture of these fuckers in because these were hot. You know what? The- okay. Future me better save a picture of these in the fucking video so y'all know the demo on what I'm talking about because these shoes under a white wedding dress- okay. Imagine if- okay. I don't even have to get my drawing towel back. I'm probably gonna just draw an MS Paint, y'all. But we're going back to some MS Paint days. Y'all better get crazy. Okay. If all of us remember where Sherlock... Where the wedding happened, basically. Where all of our hearts were broken, including Sherlock's. Because you, you gotta be kidding me. The face he pulled. Like, John pulled the worst kind of thing on this gay-ass motherfucker. Because Sherlock literally told, you, told him... Fucking season one when they first met. Episode one. That women are not his area. This motherfucker basically just told you he was gay. Then again, you look at Sherlock and think, yeah, he wouldn't do drugs. Nigga, he smokes some, can take some shit. Like, I can imagine Sherlock being a drunky, druggy. You know, hot boxing in a fucking car. That is his best life with Lestrade. Lestrade having to bust his ass every time. You know, I'm gonna write that fanfic one of these days, y'all. Sherlock in college, getting caught with mushrooms. <sighs> be the dream. Let's get to the fanfic, because honestly, I'm going to have such a fucking fun time editing this. Okay. In a cherry cha in a cheery chapel nest nestled- Hold on, where are my glasses? Because I can't see anything. Hold up a second. Found them. Ugh. Let me take my bonnet off, because I honestly- 
My glasses are already crooked as they are, but damn, with these fucking when I bought it on, I can't see shit. Okay, now I can see. Sure, smudged as hell, but I can still see something. Okay. In a cheery chapel nestle, nestled between a babbling brook and an orangey and or what the fuck is that word? Hold up. I'm confused. Is that? Cause I don't know if I'm reading this right. See, if I actually shared my screen with y'all, y'all would know what the fuck I'm talking about. But like, how did you say seeing what the fuck I look up at night? In other words, I don't need you guys judging me for the shit. Should I like? Orangery. Orangery. That's how. That's what I thought it was. Oh. Oh. A greenhouse where orange trees are grown. The more you know, guys. <laughs> shit. In an orangery in Bristol, seven, six, 76 guests gathered to celebrate the promise of a union. Made of limestone and dark cherry wood, the small sanctuary was a florist's dream. Hydrangeas, mock oranges, and the lilacs were bursting from every crevice, nook, and cranny. The biggest display was in a vase, emitting a sweet perfume to those standing by the altar. Like the or royal, royal pulpy fruit grown on the grounds, the sunlight poured ever effervescently, effervescently into the chambers through the windows, window planes. See y'all, I can't even read with the glasses on. They're old prescription anyway. I can't see. Also, give me a minute because I'm cleaning my glasses off because I can't fucking see with these things on. How are you feeling, baby boy? Clean? And you, baby boy? Please clean, because sometimes, you know when you clean your glasses off and the other one doesn't- Well, you clean one lens off, and it's like, it's like you can see through it perfectly fine, and the other one gets cleaned off, and you're like, The fuck? What'd I do to you? Because I didn't do shit. Because my glasses are always dirty, because I have a greasy-ass face, and sometimes you, like, for, you accidentally touch your lens, and you're like, My world's over. And it is indeed over, because the fucking lens gets touched, and you're- I'm gonna shoot myself. No way, I'm not cleaning these motherfuckers off. I'm gonna just deal with those punches. I'm about to do it. Okay. John glanced from his standing point. All of it was just so sweet. The flowers, the smell, the hushed titters from the crowd. It was all just so sweet. John frowned. Too sweet. Like the sugary sludge that Americans like to call Southern iced tea. Y'all mean Arnold Palmer? Um, the fuck is this? Oh, Southern Iced Oh. Who the fuck told you Southern Iced Tea? Who told you Iced Tea was sweet? That shit is a weird... It's not a good... It doesn't taste good, you know? Like, Iced Tea is a weird sweet. It's not that kind of sweet where you like it. It's a kind of sweet where it's like... It needs sugar. Like, you drink... You don't... Because personally, I don't drink Iced Tea. I drink Arnold Palmer's. Or basically, what Earl Palmer is it's just it's iced tea and lemonade, basically that. Cause I can't fuck with no like lemonade, like iced tea, and just that. No, nah, bitch, cause that shit's disgusting. Anyway, see, this is gonna take me half an hour. I told y'all it's only is that even two? How many words? It's like two thousand. Yep, two thousand. Okay. Why Mary liked it, he had no clue. His stomach made itself known for the hundredth time that day, that day. When Greg had Greg had treated him to breakfast that morning, he had for, forgone the orange juice and complimentary mimosas offered to him, fearing the citric acid would tear his stomach to bits and the possibility of juice slash champagne mixture coming out to rudely greet his new bride. John settled for a strong cuppa and some toast with jam and honey. Honey. John's restless guts rumbled. He could always stomach some honey. He loved honey. While thick and sugary, it also had a healthy tang to it. Honey also had many medical purposes, or so he had learned from somewhere a long time ago. Unlike oranges, honey lacked the acid that would tear him apart. Do I hear some what? Subtext! In other words, John's like, I need Sherlock back. Fuck Mary. Mary, bye! Cause I don't really think he even loved Mary. I think... He looked for a replacement. He saw chaos in Mary, you know? Like, I think... I think when Shirley, like, when John had met Mary, I think he saw... When he looked at Mary, he saw chaos. He saw the end coming closer and closer to him, and he thought, I... 
he saw the, a new mess. He saw a wreck. He saw a nightmare ready to destroy him in every single way. And he was like, I need Sherlock, but he can't, I can't have him. He is dead. He looks for someone else with the same wild look of insanity in their, his, their eyes. And he finds Mary, which is why Mary and our dearest Lord and Savior, Sherlock, get along so well. Which is ironic, since people ship them. I don't get it, but like, no one do you, bitch. Live your best life. I won't read it, but live you. <sighs> when he and Mary's Mary tried wedding cake samples, he had liked he had liked a dense dark chocolate cake sweetened with ripe raspberries and honey. Mary found it too rich and bitter, favoring a healthy heavenly orange ch chiffon with vanilla buttercream. They got the heavenly orange chiffon with blue where the fuck am i getting i'm blind guys vanilla butter buttercream anything anything for mary she was the bride after all fiddling with his braces john tried to make the tremor of his hand go away the fuck brace someone want to tell me what the fuck braces is in this fanfic because i'm gonna link it so y'all motherfuckers can find this part Ugh, Christ, I need to share this damn screen with y'all, because y'all don't know what the fuck I'm talking about, and y'all all look at, probably looking at me like, the fuck is she talking about? Ugh, God, I hate my life. And I hate myself. Lestrade tapped him on the shoulder, eyes and brows shifted in concern. John waved him away with a smile. The man had really outdone himself with his best man duties. Even though they both knew that he was second choice in John's heart for the job, he took the reins with gusto. The stag do was probably the best bachelor, bachelor, blah, 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 bachelorly fun that he had since before. Sorry for that tapping noise. My, my bracelet's doing a weird thing. Don't worry, chirp. Don't even worry about it, bro. Just he and some blokes going from a pub, from a pub crawl to a rather ritzy strip club. Ooh, get some dick, girl. Get that dick and go. It was also a sober Greg. It was also it was also a sober Greg that held a drunkenly sobbing John on on his sitting room floor. Thankfully, it was after everyone went home for the night. He had promised to take what confessions John had made that night to his grave. John cleared his throat. Throat. None of that. Shifting his increasing increasingly aching leg, John tried to discreetly check with it, check his watch. Mary was taking her sweet time getting ready. She insisted, she insisted that she wanted to put a, the dress on herself after hair and makeup. Girl, what? Okay, I'm sorry. The way I plan to put my wedding dress on is makeup first, obviously. I don't know why. Because if the makeup falls on the dress, you're fucked. You don't have time to wash this bitch. So you might want to put the, obviously, okay, what you're supposed to do is do the makeup first. Cover your face in a rag, slip the dress on over, or depending on how the dress is made, you either have to slip it over your head or under, or you can just step into it. Personally, I think my dress will be stepping because I'm too damn lazy to fucking slip that shit over. And if it's a slip on, you need to do your makeup and hair first, yes. Because if that makeup gets on that dress, girl, you're fucked. You're screwed. Period of point. Having found the dress in a vintage clothing store by herself, she wanted the gown to be a surprise to all. Even Janine, her maid of honor, would not catch a single glimpse of the dress until Mary walked down the aisle. Girl, don't, you extra, you're extra ass. I don't, people that do that much, uh-uh. I personally can't fuck with anyone who does that much. Like, she's like, oh, I don't want anyone seeing it. It's like, well, bitch, I don't care who the hell you are. Someone has to see this or you're gonna have to have someone just gonna have, like, have, like, you're gonna have to appoint someone you don't know to do this shit. What the fuck is that? I'm gonna have to crack that open later, but that's not the point. If you're gonna do this much, you obviously are extra. Oh my god, oh my god, I know exactly what they're gonna do. I know, I'm guessing, but okay, I love how I do this, because, okay, what's gonna happen is she's gonna come, since she, no one's seen her in the dress, it's gonna be Sherlock in the dress with a veil over his face, and no one's gonna know who the fuck it is. And I was like, oh, Mary, and then, like, Sherlock takes off the thing, he's like, Hi, Daddy. <laughs> I'm kidding. He literally would just go, Hello, Watson. Shall we? And John's like, I'm dreaming, aren't I? No, what? Let this dream continue on. I don't fucking care. <sighs> I wish. I wish John would be like, This is a dream, Charles. Like, I mean, it's mine. It's probably mine. And, oh, my God, I love it. I love it because then Charles can get punched in his face in his wedding dress, and I'm going to laugh because he's going to bleed on it, and it's going to be amazing. Mm. Uh, okay. 
they were supposed to. They were supposed to. to, to, to they were supposed to start the. Perf, perf, the fuck is this word? Unless you misspelled professional, which I very much doubt, because the C's. Oh, you probably did misspell it. Let me make sure. Processional. Processional. Then I said it right. Oh. Okay. For let's learn a little something today, guys. Processional, of for or used in religious or ceremonial processions, or the noun, a book containing litanies and hymns for use in religious processions, especially at the beginning of a service. In our words, bitch, day wedding. We're gonna go over all the special fun words we've learned today in this fan fiction, guys. <laughs> okay. I'm sorry, I keep doing that. I'm sorry, I'm like very gross. Half an hour ago, the guests were just beginning to beginning to show restlessness. There was something that his gran had said at Harry's wedding. A bride is never late, Johnny. The guests are just early. Since there are two of them, the guests can be extra early. Damn. She had said that when Harry and Claire went over were over an hour late to the courthouse, they found out later that they had a last minute shag and lost track of time. God damn. Harry is oh, we love her. Half an hour half an hour was nothing compared to Harry's record time. To, to Harry's record. It was Mary's wedding day. But Brian's dreamed of this day, or so he had been told. It would make sense that she won't want every day to be I mean, some of us. My mom, for instance, my parent, my mom has been married twice, and both times were in a courthouse. The reception is a big deal. The reception is where you get lit and twisted with your people. Honestly, my mom's reception, I was upstairs. I wasn't fucking nothing. I was not fucking with any of it. Because we had, okay, I'll, uh, this will be a story time. If you, if you want to know about it, you just ask, bro. You look towards the back of the church, the bulky, and... See, y'all are going to learn some new words today. Antiquitized, antiquitized, I think I'm saying that right, antiquitized doors stayed securely shut. Damn. Girl, this is your own damn wedding. Don't be late. Antiquated. Antiquated. There we go. It's antiquated, y'all. Antiquated doors stayed securely shut. Mary was eager for this wedding. No chance she would not pull a runner. His leg throbbed again. Yes, Mary was not the one to worry about, and that made him feel so guilty. He was about to marry a beautiful woman. They had a nice flat in the suburbs. He had a secure job as a GP in surgery. All they needed was a picket fence and a dog, and they would have it all. I mean, y'all had a kid, so like, close enough, right? Right. He nodded to himself and lifted his chin. Yes, this is all a dream. All he strive for lead it to this quaint, sweet day. But do you feel alive? Is this is this what you're living for? A familiar baritone voice whispered in his head. As he had done many times since the awful day, John Swallow stood up straighter and ignored the voice. That voice. His wedding day was meant to be a happy occasion and not a, a haunted one. As he finished the thought, the door finally opened. The guests rasped in delight. The bridesmaids started to filter in one by one in their purple, really, John, their lilac dresses. Janine glided with something like a smug grace, like a purebred cat that can soon that can be spoon-fed cream on a silk pillow. Ugh. He never been too fond of Janine. Well, Janine in the alternate universe was a hoe. Fucking. The worst part is Sherlock's gay. Like, he literally says this shit. He's like, I'm dedicated to my word. Like, he said, women are not my fucking... You know, what's the word? They're not his forte, bit. And he said... No, he and John's, like, boyfriend, he's like, no. Like, John, like, he... Charlotte doesn't say men aren't really my forte either. So we can't... We can rule out asexuality, so I'm just assuming... Damn, I was flat-chested. We can just assume that, you know... He gay gay. I'm sorry, I have a picture of myself right across from my TV, and that's what I'm looking at. So I'm looking at, like, my computer, picture, then TV, and I'm seeing my fucking flat-chested ass, and I realize that I had no boobs, and those are the days I fucking miss. The days where I didn't have to go outside with a bra on. We, I think we all miss those. 
God, give me a breast reduction. Like, get rid of my tits and I'll be happy. Anyway, let's continue this fanfic before we start getting into my problems. As she made her way to the altar, she looked at the crowd with an assessing eye. Her gaze was delicately lit. Delicately landed on a man here and there or there. Smirk ever in place. John did not need to be a master of deduction to know that she was on the prowl. Ew. Finally, the moment of truth. The music changed to the play. The punchable. The guests stood up in anticipation. John put on a cheerful smile. Right then, here we go. The crowd hushed as the bright valley came into sight. It was like an eerie fog of on the moor. The moor rolled into the sunny sanctuary. A gothic romance novel page bled from their bindings to drown snow white singing animals, friends. This was not what John expected. He blinked. Mary had said the dress was a lace and ve Mary said had said that the dress had lace and a vintage feel to it. Medically keen sapphire eyes darted to the swath of crinkled cloth draped from hip to hip. Vintage indeed. Mary always seemed to fare the 1920s for her more fancy clothes, such as dresses, such as the dress she wore when they got engaged. He half expected her to sport finger waves and a white beaded flapper frock. This dress is more Victorian style gown. Highly unusual. While it did not look bad, it did seem a little more conservative. And posture than he knew Mary to like. Looking over him and witnessing Janine's badly concealed, incredibly, in concealed, incredibly, he could tell him he was not the only one to think so. Made of cream colored satin and lace, the dress covered his bride from neck to toe, even obscured, obstructed by the cathedral long veil. John could tell the dress had a high collar, despite having. I knew it, guys. This is what's gonna fucking happen. I told you what I just what I just said. I told y'all it's gonna be Sherlock under that dress. And he's like, "Hello, John." Okay, I'm fine. I'm fine. <sighs> Despite having what looked like a corseted bodice, bodice, the dress did not really accentuate her curves. Whilst the corset was forgiving in that it flared out, flared at the hips, the bodice made her chest look almost flat it didn't appear to be tightly done even done up though so it was a strange optical illusion did she have trouble lacing it up herself still if she liked it he would not say a word as the music faded when his bride made it to the altar she came next came to stand next to john and towered over him john closed his fist as he tried to hide his tightening jaw by a smile damn those heels bro Y'all short people must be struggling out here. A six five as people over six feet be fucking laughing at y'all asses. Ha ha. Mary had insisted on wearing those designer high heel. Aww, those boots have been really cute. I'm sorry. Designer high heels that she got on sale said they were her something blue. Wearing wearing them, she was at least a head taller than him. Ha ha, bitch. Oh oh, Mary, you slut. You're so smart. I love Mary. Honestly, Mary was like the best friend that they all needed. Like, let's be real. If John was the one to disappear and he found out that Mary was a Sherlock, that would have been a way better storyline. Find Sherlock married a woman. He looked at him like, I thought you fucked dudes. Sherlock's like, I mean, sometimes you know a little pussy in that life. <laughs> and I'm a laugh because obviously that's a whole truth. Except for gay guys. Y'all gay guys live your best fucking lives. Buy pride girl, buy pride people, live your best lives. Okay, anyway. Keep it together, Watson. He thought to himself, just get through this. Let her be happy and it'll be over and done with. After this, you can have some of that bloody cake and have a nice sit down. Only things did not seem to be going to plan. Mary was devi deviating from the carefully practiced plan from the rehearsal. For one thing, Mary's bouquet did not match the rest of the flowers surrounding them. Not being an expert of foliage, John could only make out that the bouquet had white roses, ivy, and forget-me-nots. Did he- and forget-me-nots? He didn't even think Mary liked roses. That's cause it's not Mary, bitch. That's fucking Sherlock. Cause that bitch is flat-chested in a Victorian dress. We all know it's Sherlock because that, that bitch is what, kids? 
This is where you say extra, extra. That's right, y'all. <laughs> Janine was supposed to take Mary's bouquet and hold it for her during the service. When Janine made to take the bouquet, Mary resisted handing her flowers over. Confused, Janine held out her hand again for them, only for Mary to shake her he her veiled head and and head in all but bury her hands into the bouquet, shrugging. Janine let her keep them. As the preacher went on, Mary quietly reached for the small white rose in the bouquet. Finally, he, she pushed the flower into John's hand, looking at it. He realized it was not a flower at all. It was a piece of paper, origami folded to look like a flower. Jen opened his mouth to ask, but just as quickly cl clicked his jaw shut. They were in the middle of a wedding. If he talked, it would interrupt the ceremony. Mary must have known this when she hit the paper. Carefully and discreetly. Unfolding the paper, paper flower, John realized there was a writing scrawled on it. It was a note. When he got it all unfolded, John had to squint to see the tiny writing. When he realized what was written, his blood. <laughs> Guys, I'm freaking sick. Oh my god. Oh my god. Guys, okay. I gotta calm down. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. Okay. I'm calm. I'm calm. Oh my god. Um, why am I? Why am I getting so sick? Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool. I'm calm. I'm cool. I'm cool, guys. The fuck? Why? Why? Vatican cameos. The fuck? Is that how you spell? I know how you spell cameos. I know that's fuck. I know that word. But what the fuck is that? Va the fuck does Vatican? Is that Vatican? Oh, Vatican. Yep, that is the Vatican. Making sure. Trying his best not to react, John stiffened his spine, physically swallowed his panic, and stood at attention. Only two people in the world knew that code, and he was one of them. Dodo was dead, was supposed to be at least. Someone was about to die, that was for sure. But who? With a strange combination of sinking, of a sinking feeling and a bubbling elation, John glanced down at his hand of his beloved. They were still obscured by the flowers, trying, trying to go for incompetence as possible. John took the closest hand in his own. If it had been Mary's hand, it would have been small and a little dry from her bread-making hobby. But no. These were not the small hands of a woman with a 